at that time, I would work my way up to being a chief announcer uh, at KGB, which was a, it was a big job because I got $150 a month. That wasn't bad then, but, you know, I could live on it. But I wanted to get married, and so uh, I uh, took the job, which was a temporary job, as radio director of the San Diego World's Fair. And I ran the program department, ran the public address system, introduced Herbert Hoover on the air coast to coast, introduced Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the air coast to coast, and did something nobody has ever before done in the history of the world. I brought the entire United States fleet with my crew into San Diego Harbor on a CBS show from the fair when the, har when the fleet was moored outside Point Loma in a fog bank couldn't get in for Navy Day. Mm -hmm. I made the decision. We had all the names. And so I said, we're never going to get another coast-to-coast -coast hour in this little town. Grab it. Who'll know? Well, of course, the people who lived on Point Loma who were looking down on the harbor, they knew they could hear it on the radio, but they didn't see anything. The next day I had a call from the uh, public relations man of the Admiral of the United States Fleet, which was their home port, to report at his desk. So I did a little advanced thinking, and so when he asked me how I had the temerity to bring a fleet into the harbor, its home harbor, when it was out at sea, I said, uh, Mr. Uh, Admiral, I said, I've given a lot of thought to be that before I made the decision, and I thought that all the taxpayers in the Middle West would never understand that the money they built and operated, the greatest fleet in the world that couldn't get into its own home port, would be a waste of money. He says, oh. Well, don't do it again. <laughs> that was what a gutty, nervy kid I was. Well, but if you don't have you know, some of that in you, you don't go anywhere in this business. Of course, you got to say yes to a lot of things that you wonder if you can do, and more important, you've got to admit when you don't get them done, you can get up off your behind and try again. Because anybody who cannot stand rejection better not be in this business. I had plenty of that. Jack Benny once told me backstage at a nightclub I was working at with him at Lake Tahoe, he said, Art, he says, I miss radio. He says, we created a picture of my, of my underground vault and of my Maxwell and the other things that we never can create on television. So that's what radio does and did.